some of the equipment you'll need you can find on site. Another item is the Kasugai, which is a sort of climbing hook, or a pair of them I guess, allowing you to scale walls. This sounds a lot cooler than it is, because you barely get to climb yourself. It's basically a MacGuffin for that section of the game. Like, the goal is a wall, not a door. That just means you have to find some Kasugai, and you'll just barely start climbing, and then it'll go to the next section. Similar to Splinter Cell, this also has an indicator of whether or not you're hidden, and it'll also say if someone is looking for you, and there's a sort of mini radar of the enemies, though it doesn't always tell you when there are enemies nearby, so be careful not to rely on it too much. I think every single cutscene is a pre-rendered video. At the very beginning there'll be sort of tutorials to guide you, and the guide has some irony to the things he says, like, oh, look, there's a place for you to hide, how convenient. Every level is divided up into sections, so you don't have to replay very much if you do fail a section entirely. I'm not entirely sure if it autosaves per section, but whenever you end the game, there's the option to save and quit. And then it definitely does save. With the stealth kills, you will stab a lot of necks and break a lot of hearts. Or is it the other way around? Some of the stealth kills look really cool, but I'd say maybe up to half of them are just awkward or weird or not that impressive. If a stabbing is involved, you will grab the enemy's sword and use it on them. And one of them has you draw his sword from down here and it'll kind of come up and it'll sort of look like it's going through his chest and I have no idea how that's supposed to work. Like literally, he draws it and it's there in the chest. It's not like he draws it all the way out and really quickly stabs, no, he draws it and it's in the chest. At this point I would like to offer my services to any game developers who are hard pressed for cool killing methods in games. I'm not saying that I have significant skills in that area, that I have some unique ideas, but I can certainly come up with something better than much of what was in this. Whenever a mission loads, you get three lines, and there'll be one or two tips and one or two fortune cookie sayings. Ricky Morrow has a decent enough cool guy voice, and he and I am a certainly can be badasses at times. I'm not entirely sure why he feels the need to, every time he's killed someone, apologize to them. I haven't come upon any bugs or glitches in the game. When you walk across a dead body, you'll typically step over it. And that's kinda cool, but some of the time it just doesn't work. I think they should have applied that effort somewhere else. At times, you can't tell who spotted you. That is really frustrating. Some of the directions you get, you know, prompts for moving the Wiimote or nunchuck in a certain direction, are kind of confusing. The armored guard will literally sometimes say when he is looking for you, when he knows you're in the area, something to the effect of, how may I kill you? Let me count the ways. Unlike other stealth games, if the enemy knows you're in the area, he can spot you even if you are technically hidden until they forget about you. If you're in water and you do a sneak kill, you'll pull them under and drown them in a matter of a few seconds, even though you're under the water too and not breathing through the tube. I can't explain that. Honestly, the game, like an active drill, honestly, the game, much like the active drill at an oil platform, is just plain boring. And it is the only Ubisoft game that I would say that about. I don't love I don't love Red Steel or my fitness coach cardio workout. But they're still fine. They're good enough. With that said, I saved the best for last. Remember the boss battles? Remember me mentioning fencing? Ah yes. The main reason I bought this, that along with the fact that Ubisoft's name was attached to it. Honestly, Ubisoft, guys, what happened? Qu'est-ce que? Anyway, 
the fencing is actually really good. It takes a lot of time to get used to, and since you spend the entire game trying to avoid the situation where you're fighting, the boss battles, which are all duels, are really where you learn it. It's kind of trial by fire. Basically, there are two stages to any duel. The defend stage and the attack stage. To defend, you have to angle your sword, i.e. the Wiimote, vertically, horizontally, or tilted to one of the sides. Those are the four options. So you it's really immersive, it really feels like you're holding a sword and blocking the other guy's strikes. You have to angle it very precisely. If not, your sword will take damage, and if it eventually breaks, you lose the fight. Now if this happens in the regular game, not against the boss, you just proceed to teleport back to the beginning of the section, just like if you were spotted without a sword. If it happens in a boss battle, you're screwed. The fight is over. If you angle the sword completely incorrectly, you yourself will be hit by their strike. Now you can't die in the regular battles, in the sections. Again, you'll teleport back to the beginning of the section. But in the boss battles, you have three lives, and if you lose all three, butterflies come out. No, you die. Now you do get a little bit of a warning of how to angle the Wiimote before the enemy strikes, but these of course get increasingly shorter as you go along, as you face tougher and tougher bosses. Now once a defend stage is over, you go to the attack stage, and there may be more than one attack or defend stage to a battle, especially a boss battle. The attack stage, you can basically strike from whatever angle you want, but the game is going to let you know with little arrows what the weak points are. And every time you hit a weak point it does more damage than just a regular strike and you only have limited time to do all these strikes in and so you can't take all the time in the world to figure out what angle to attack from. You can do combos of the weak point strikes and that's how the duels work. Once you in attacking have taken all of the enemy's health down you win. And their chance to win is if you don't defend properly. Blocking can be tough and intense. If you shake the nunchuck, you turn 180 degrees, although like several other things in this, I hardly ever used it. One of the enemies is a very busty young lady who shows a lot of cleavage, and she was nice enough to paint an important tattoo onto one of her breasts, giving us all an excuse to stare. So all in all, I can't really recommend this game. It's far too monotonous, awkward, and uninspired. As long as stealth is done right, it's a lot of fun, even if it does take patience. Here, it just isn't that gratifying. The fencing is among the best, especially the blocking, that I've seen in any game. And it really utilizes what the Wii can do, but there's far too little of it. I would like to see this approach to fencing in far more Wii games, and I think maybe it could work for multiplayer. Maybe like if you hold down maybe the Z button on the nunchuck, you defend and it only notices how you angle the Wiimote, and if you let go of it, you attack. I really think that could work amazingly and be an absolutely unique experience. I am always on the lookout for good fencing in video games. That was my spoiler-free review of Tenchu Shadow Assassins. Hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.